What's going on guys, Saber Sauce here. In this video, I'm going to be showing you three different water shaders using Unity's Shader Graph. Real quick before the video starts, I just wanted to let you guys know that only about 0.4% of my viewers are subscribed. So if you guys could quickly subscribe to the YouTube channel, that would be great, because I'm trying to reach a thousand subscribers before the end of the year. Alright, back to the video. Alright, first things first, I want to show off this original water shader. So I actually made this be used with planes. So the first two shaders are going to use planes, the second one can also use cubes. But I'm going to show off the plane ones first. So here you can see that the water has waves, the reflections on the water are a little bit dynamic, and there's a noise effect going on with the colors. So as you can see, there's several different portions of this. I'm gonna just start off with the top. So as you can see, this one is going into the position, the vertex position. And we're starting with time and a wave speed. Then we're multiplying it together. And then we're offsetting the um, noise, which is also being scaled by the wave height. We are also combining it into a normal vector. That way we can actually bring it in as a position. So that's for the actual waves motion of the mesh. Now this area right here is for the normals. So we have the time, wave speed, and this is supposed to be a um, static variable. Then we're multiplying them together. We've been putting them through some tiling and offset. Then we're using the noise, which is based on the ripple density. Then again, we're using normal vectors. That way we can put it into a space that is able to be interpreted by the normal. So that's for the reflection on the water. And then the most important part of this shader is going to be over here. So we're using a time and a ripple speed. Then we're using a radial shear to distort the Voronoi noise. You can see right here. And the Voronoi noise is also being controlled by ripple density. Then we're using ripple slimness so that we can get the ripples to kind of be this effect where there's only they only cover a certain portion of the screen. Then we're multiplying it by the ripple color and adding back in the base color, which we add back into the actual base color of the mesh. So this shader gets us this effect. And if I press play, you'll be able to see the diagnostic and it's taking about 1.5, 1.4 milliseconds to render, which is actually not bad. Of course, you could distort or change this mesh to make it run better, but considering that no one's going to be running this that fast, this is not bad. All right, so here you can see we have a tune shader. So if you go into the actual tune shader here, you can see that almost all of this is the same as the other shader. The only difference is that we have an if statement right here that's using this boolean that is is tune to change it. So if is tune is activated, then we feed this noise into a step node and then we multiply it by the ripple color. So that effect gives us, if we click play, it has a little bit more of a cartoonish kind of ripple to it. And here you can see it runs almost exactly the same. But we're getting a more, if you have a game that's more cartoony, or you don't really think that the more realistic water would make sense, then this is not a bad choice. So last but not least, this shader is actually not a um, plain shader. It's a cube, so if I bring this cube up, you can see that we actually have refraction going on. So this shader works much differently. That's this right here. So this one, we actually are combining a bunch of, we're only changing the base color. And to change the base color, to change the refraction, we're taking the scene color and distorting it based on this normal this gradient noise right here. And we're adding that into this lerp. So we're lerping between this and, which is this the distorted base color from the scene and the actual color of the mesh. So we have two different colors. We have a deep 
you can see deep water and a shallow water color so I made the deep water color darker than the shallow water color and we're just lurping between them based on the opacity so if I press play here you can see that the water renders it's taking a maybe a little bit longer to render this water as compared to the other two so if one thing that's important here is that if we go into this you can see that I have the depth texture and opaque texture activated now this won't work if you don't have the opaque and depth textures activated so it's important that you do activate both of these settings in your universal render pipeline settings so yeah that's it for this video i just wanted to show you guys real quick three interesting shaders that you can use for water um, i'm not going to go into the shader graph fully for this video but if you are interested in seeing more of the shader graph then make sure to hit like and subscribe